Real JP Multimedia, proud sponsor of the Nerdball Podcast. Here to help you with all things audio, video, graphics, photo, web design. From weddings to real estate, commercial business to private use, we offer a big variety of services for almost any budget. And if we can't do it, we will find someone who can. Find us at realjp.com. That's R E E L J P.com. Real JP Multimedia. I'm Joel Cady. I'm Cody Oakley. And this is the Nerdball Podcast. This is the Nerdball Podcast with Lorenzo Melcher. Perfect. All right, guys. Thanks for uh, coming out here, waking up early on a Sunday morning. Uh, to come on the podcast. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. I feel like um, I feel like you, Joel, especially, uh, have been passing me for like a year to come on here. Yeah, it's been a while, <laughs> uh, but now you're here. So, uh, how's it feel? Feels wonderful. Are you guys nervous? Not at all. No. Well, you're you're a professional now. So. Oh yeah, completely. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Cody? I'm a little nervous. I feel like um, I mean. Everyone's pretty comfortable on the football field, like because yeah. they know everyone, and you guys talk a lot. But I think I feel like outside of that, Joel, I feel is pretty talkative in general. But oh, yeah. I feel like you're not, not really. No, no? I'm very antisocial. Yeah, I mean, you're yeah. probably you're probably out with like your group of friends, and that's yeah. pretty much it, right? I just got the group. Yeah, I'm good with them, but other people I don't really talk to. Who do you hang out with? Um, is it is it football players or is it other people? Being mostly right? football players and yeah. Kelsey a lot. Yeah, but shout out already. Gosh, we're like <laughs> two seconds in. He asked the question. <laughs> I just like I just like. <laughs> Joel, what about you? Is it mostly football players for you? Because when I was in high school, I had football players, but I had other other guys too. It's it's like a mix. Like we we all have like we we all hang out with each other, but there's also like another group like of friends that we hang out with. Like all the football players like mix with them. Okay, so we we have like a mix of people. More yeah. like yeah. I'm I'm just not set on like one group. I guess. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, have both of you? Did both of you grow up in Perrysburg? Yeah. yeah, I've lived here my entire life. Yeah, okay, me too. you too. Yeah. Uh, did you play? When's the first Joe? When's the first time you played tackle football? Um, I'm pretty sure it was what sixth grade, big gold. Okay, all right. And why? Why? Because it starts at fifth. Why is? Is there a reason you didn't? Do you remember that, um, why, you, why you didn't want to do it? Fifth so grade? I I didn't even like want to play sports or anything. Oh, I right. I didn't realize that was for me. And one of my friends, Gavin, at the time, we were Gavin Moore. Yeah, we were friends like all growing up, and he was playing football so i just decided to give it a try and i've loved it ever since yeah have you always been i mean you're a giant dude right now have you always been like a tall big dude or, or is that something? um yeah i i mean for the most part yeah yeah i i used to actually be anorexic when i was a, like a really small child but like just not eating yeah no I, I would throw up everything and then i i like this was before i even knew you and like really like eight years old or whatever but why yeah. why is that i don't know yeah, I think I just made up for lost time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right. So you you started playing in sixth grade. Uh, I'm assuming you were offensive lineman because, yeah, right, because yeah, yeah. the weight limit and everything. Is there ever? Did you ever play? Like I know you, you probably played like backyard football with your buddies and that kind of stuff. Um, but flag football wasn't as big. Like Mateo gets to play. He's been playing flag football since he was five. So have you like did you do any of that any of the other stuff? I don't think I would have been very good at flag football or anything <laughs> like that. Or you're just you're just destined to be like, you know what, I'm just never gonna catch catch the football. And uh, I I never really that hasn't bothered me. Yeah. A lot of guys like wanna catch the football, but yeah. I don't really like obviously we used to ask you to run the football, but that's like that's just joking around because you guys would get pissed about it. But I I mean you guys would do it in practice. That's that's one thing. Like to do it in practice. Um did my camera just die? I don't know. I think it's about to. Let me check that real quick. This is great podcast. Joel, how you doing? I'm living the dream, Cody. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Is this getting picked up right now? Yeah. Yeah. Word. Nice. Let's probably take a drink break. Yeah. It's a small water. It is a small water. <laughs> Well, that's uh, we had a party for small children, so that's what we had. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's see if that works. If it's 
guys are nice. <coughs> you sound right. like Kirk Cousins. <laughs> it's like die, die, die. All right. Sorry about that. It's okay. All right. So, um, don't care about catching the football. Just destined to be a lineman, and that's what you are. Yeah. Um, do you like you, – you, I mean, you play defense now, but do you like defense better than offense? Not at all. No? I, I – like – I play defense. I have a lot of fun playing like high school defensive line, but I know yeah. like in the future when I take a step to college, I want to play offensive line. Okay, all right. Because I'm not. I, I wouldn't say I'm skilled enough to be a college defensive lineman. There's so many like. There's not a lot of guys my size playing college defensive line. Sure. They're, they're more like on the lighter side. Mm-hmm. Even the guys who play interior. So it's just it, I don't think it'll be for me. All right, all right. Uh, well, we'll get to the college stuff. But I want to go to Cody. Cody, uh, when did you start playing football? Uh, fifth grade. Yeah, and you knew like, did, do you have older brothers or sisters? I have two older brothers, and they played also, or no? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they uh, did they play in high school? Uh, my oldest one did, but then he quit. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> he he, he had the size. Sure, if he had the work <laughs> ethic. He could have made it far, but he just quit. So. All right. Um, what made you want to play football? Uh, my parents made me. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> I did not want to play. They forced me to. Are you Are you glad? They oh, did yeah. That? yeah. Oh, yeah. So happy. So uh, that was my freshman year. I moved to Perrysburg when I was a freshman, and my dad they said the same thing. Like, you should play football. He didn't really make me, but he strongly suggested play football, meet people, because you're moving to a new town. Yeah. So I did, and I'm glad I did. Uh, but my my sister, I have two younger sisters, and the one right, right below me, she told my dad, I wish you would have made me do more things. So my baby sister, who's seven years younger than me, my dad, my parents made her do everything because he did, he did not want to hear that again. But she, you know, she appreciated all the stuff and everything. Right, so yeah. and it worked out for you, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, at the time, you're probably like, "What?" Exactly. I was so so scared. Yeah. Yeah. I did not want to run. I did not want to get hit. What were you afraid of? Just like <sighs> embarrassment. Everything? Embarrassment. I mean, yeah, because I did, I was so out of shape. I okay. was so fat. <laughs> <laughs> and I did not want to run. First time I showed up to practice, like do a lap. I could barely do the lap. Oh, really? Yeah, it was so bad. So when, the, so you make it through the year. Is there at that whole point while you're playing fifth grade, you're like, I don't want to be out here, or was there a point where you're like, this is okay? No, it took like two practices, and I fell in love. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it was good. It was quick. Yeah. It was quick. I know for because I started playing when I was in third grade, and third, fourth, fifth grade. Uh, I was excited, wanted to play, and like mm-hmm. two weeks in, I'm like, get me out of here. Yeah. But my daddy, my dad said, nope, you started it, now you got to finish right, it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. That's That was, a, I mean, obviously a good choice by your parents. I mean, yeah. it, it probably could have went the other way, and you just hated football forever. Right, yeah. Yeah. Do you think if you didn't like it, um, if you didn't like it your if, as a fifth grader, would they have made you play as a sixth grader? Um, Probably. Yeah. 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 I. Uh, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> but again, it's it's it, you know yeah. glad that you did that. Yeah. Me too. Um, again, same thing with Joel. Uh, it's no surprise in our camera. I can see you guys are big dudes, and you both play on a line. Uh, do you prefer one over the other? Offense. Yeah. Every day. Is there a particular reason? I know um, why I liked it. Uh, offense is more like skill. Yeah. I guess because you need a, you need you have stuff to do every play. You don't just go rush. Yeah. But you, yeah. Joel, you got to know plays, right? Yeah, no. There's, you go to one gap or the other. You, well, there's there's more you have to know on the defensive line than offensive line. Like you you that, have to. That's, that's fight. That, that's that's fight. That that's is, wrong. Okay, that is, <laughs> that is okay. wrong. You have to like you have to read your key, and you have to have like an arsenal of like moves, Joel. And if you can't hit a move, then it's Joel, Cody. There's like four different fronts that we have to go through, <laughs> and we have to know who to hit on every play. And if we miss. Then the play's over. So all here, of us have to work in unison for it to work. So if, if I miss, then I if you miss, a, you get clogged, and then another person makes a tackle. Or if we miss, he game. gets he gets tackled two yards behind the line of scrimmage. So here's so, all, right, all right, all right. So here's <laughs> oh my God. Um, luckily Connor's back there. You can dodge all your yeah. miss blocks. Um, here's my thoughts on it. If you guys care to care to know, I don't care. I'm gonna <laughs> tell you anyway. So I liked offensive line because I had to. For me, I had to think a lot more. Yeah, and I like, like, and I was calm. I didn't have like the animal instinct to just go. Like I was calm. I had to think. I liked knowing. I also liked knowing this is exactly what we're doing on defense. I don't know like what's gonna happen, so that bothers me. Like I don't know where they're going with the ball, and I don't like that. I like that on offense, I know what we're supposed to do and this is what we're going to do. On the other side, 
I feel like a defense, um, it is it's a quick react thing, and, I, and that's again I don't like that. Um, so I I think on that side of it, you have to be able to adjust immediately, or like hey we're slanting this way, you're doing this play, and like oh no, it's the opposite way of what we thought. Now you got to quick adjust. Um, so I think there's more uh, after the play. I like the before the play stuff. I think I don't like the after the play stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a yeah. kind of one of the problems for me. It's like I I struggle like being able to re- react like super quickly and like mm-hmm. I I can like diagnose like w- what's going on from the offense. Yeah, because I played offensive line like my entire career. But yeah, it, it's it's just kind of hard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and uh, definitely you, you stop talking at a horrible spot. <laughs> yeah, no, <my> bad, <laughs> no my you're bad. good. You're good. Um, yeah, and it's it's tough, especially. Uh, I mean, I guess what, that's why defensive linemen are are uh, you know more svelte and quick, you know, because that, that has to happen. But for us, it works out good because it's like, hey, uh, Joel's going to be in there. He's taking up two guys, you know, that frees up linebackers, and that's another thing too. That's it's. I, both defense and offensive line, you have to be so unselfish because you don't get any of the accolades, right? You're not getting touchdowns on offense. You're not getting a lot of tackles because your job is to take up blockers so the linebackers can make plays, right? So I think that takes another uh, another special person to just be like, this is my job. People aren't going to notice, but this is what I'm doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Do you guys do you have, uh, or do you guys watch college football or yeah. NFL or anything? Yeah. Because I know there's some, there's some football players that just don't watch football. Yeah, Young's one of those guys, yeah. but yeah. I, I, uh, I, I, I watch NFL. Yeah. I, I'm trying to get into college this year. It's not really that, for me. High school. I feel like high school kids love college football. I, I enjoy it this year. I just don't have a favorite team. Oh, so maybe that's like, why. It's it's hard for me to like put a face next to college football. You know? What I'm yeah, saying? yeah. What about you? Uh, I'm more of an NFL guy. Yeah. Like, I mean, college is nice, but I just know so much more about the NFL, and I'm like more into the game. Yeah. Do you watch when you watch football? Do you watch it differently? Because uh, I know when I started coaching, I watch it totally differently. Or you're just like watching. Them. I mean, when most people watch football, they watch like the quarterback. Sure, running. I watch the line. Yeah, yeah, all the time. That's my favorite part because I'll be t- I'll be like watching the game with my dad. I'm like, oh my gosh, did you see what happened? He goes, yeah, he they in, they uh, intercepted it or whatever. I'm like, no, the offensive line. And then I like yeah. rewind it and like show him mm-hmm. what was going on or whatever. It's pretty cool. What Joel? Do you? Fixate on like your position, or you just yeah. No, I usually watch the offensive line and defensive line. Yeah, that's like bread and butter. Yeah, I feel like I feel like if you, when you tell people that like, people hear, they're like, "Man, that's not boring." <laughs> hey, dude, it's entertaining. It is very much watching so. dudes absolutely maul each other. Yeah. Is probably like my favorite thing about football. Uh, do you have a favorite team in the NFL? Browns. I'm a diehard oh, Browns that fan. Sucks, man. Yeah, I have uh, season tickets. Oh yeah? yeah, I've had them for the last. However many years. Like, I mean, I mean that's fun though to go to the games and stuff. I've never been to Cleveland to watch a game. Yeah, football, it's football game. A miserable experience because we always lose. <laughs> <laughs> have to play Monday night. You going Monday night? Nope. You're not going. Playoff season. Uh, Got to deal with that. Yeah. Who? So who's going then? Um, my sister, her boyfriend, and my parents. I'm pretty sure. How many tickets do you guys have? Uh, four point five. Because my my uncle and my sister's boyfriend split games. Oh, okay, okay. So like we usually have that ticket, or we don't. Got it. Okay, so they they take turns. What about you, Cody? What teams do you like now? Uh, I'm a Steelers fan. Well, that sucks too. Yeah. Well, I mean, how old were you when? Because I mean, they were good. Yeah. Were you old enough to know that? No. No. Well, no, because I didn't really start watching NFL until I was like thirteen. Okay. So right. like our best season was like 2017 since then i think but i didn't really like watch it religiously until yeah. 2017 so uh that's right my team's horrible well they're not horrible but uh they haven't done anything since the 90s so but i do remember it i was alive yeah. so that's nice i'm lucky enough to watch some win super bowls and my in-laws my mother-in-law huge bills fan and they went to the super bowl four times in a row and didn't win and, <laughs> and i like to remind her that the cowboys kicked their butts one time so that that's fun um do you guys like on, on well not for on for Saturdays for you but do you guys like get together and watch college football or watch NFL with buddies or do you because I know some people I have some friends who will not watch their team play with anybody else and they just want to be in their basement or whatever at their house but I know a lot of people who like to get together and hang out. Um, I don't really watch football with my friends. I just watch it by myself. Yeah, because sometimes it can get annoying with other people <laughs> when your team's not doing good and they just keep chatting, chatting you up. Yeah, and you just want to. 
punch them in the face. Now, if your team was good, would you watch with people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I didn't like the, if the Steelers could, you know, play like an NFL team, move the ball, yeah, and not, you know, look like a JV team. Sure, sure. Probably, yeah. Yeah. So, so when your team gets better, then Cody will invite you over. Yeah. <laughs> if. Yeah. If. <laughs> if we get better. They're not looking so good right now. Now, is there uh, every year for Cleveland, and I'm going to, and this is kind of for you, Cody, because like, every year for Cleveland, it's like, yeah, finally, this is it. It's like every year. Do you feel that way? Is that how Steelers fans are too? Because I know for me, like, I'm smart enough to know, like, uh, this is probably not going to be it and we're going to be in the top 10 in the draft. But but I feel like Cleveland sports fans are just a whole different breed. We're like, yeah, you guys just went 0-20. No, this is it, though. This is it. This is the one. But, like, is that? do you feel that way or do you know? Yeah, Steelers fans are so annoying with that. <laughs> Before the season, they're like, oh, oh Kenny Pickett, Mitch Trubisky, they're yeah. going to be so good. No. It's just, it gets annoying because it happens every year. Yeah. And we're just as bad. So <laughs> I feel like that's all NFL fan bases, yeah. though, really, because, like, they make a trade or anything and then get one new face of the franchise guy. They're expecting him to yeah. be great and it just doesn't work. Like the Jaguars. Yeah. They they are like the only team who has like been accepting of their circumstances, <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> yeah, that is that is true. Um I don't know, I just maybe I maybe I just don't want to have too high of expectations so uh so my heart doesn't get hurt. But man, I just and, and it's probably because I live in Ohio. But Cleveland fans are just like every year is their year. If they they love Baker now, they hate Baker or whatever. You know, I but, love Baker. I say, what did you feel about that? How do you feel about that? He's my he's my favorite play, player in the league. Yeah, yeah, I love that guy. He he turned our franchise around. Sure, he but did. but now you got a uh, oh what's his name that hasn't played a game yet? Yeah. Sean Watson. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'd probably get off uh, you know, off that name. Do do. Like our Cleveland, I would imagine they're happy that he's a football player there, but, but like, for what he did and what he is, like that's got to be like how do you how do you cope with that? Like, like are you kind of glad he's not playing right now? Like you don't have to deal with it, and then when he comes back and he starts winning games, you're like, eh, yay! Like no, I, I I hated the move since the beginning. Like, yeah, hit him and Kareem Hunt on the same team. It's not a good look you know? <laughs> for the women in Cleveland and <laughs> for the women in Cleveland. <laughs> it's it's like. I don't know how you can allow someone who's done that on like to be paid. Yeah, he he's making like, a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it's like six year, two hundred million, yeah, two hundred fifty, something crazy. Or something yeah, like it is insane. Yeah, yeah, and the fact that he was able to even like ask her that is ridiculous. He he should be like banned from the NFL. In my yeah. opinion, I absolutely hate the move, but it is what it is. But. If he comes in and starts winning your games, what's gonna like? Like uh, how, how you can't many, justify it? How many Deshaun Watson jerseys are you gonna buy? No, I just, I just probably like, one. <laughs> honestly, in my day, that's only because every every uh, single NFL Browns jersey I've had, the player's been traded or cut within a year. So I'm hoping that's a t- that's. Trade him. Uh, I've bought my son jerseys, um, and then like something happens or. The team, or he leaves the team, or whatever, and they're expensive. Like I bought him a legit. My dad bought it for him when he was in Texas. A legit San Antonio Spurs jersey, like awesome jersey, right? The the white one with Fiesta colors. I loved it. It was Kawhi Leonard, and then see ya. And then I was like, okay, well we're gonna do, uh, <laughs> we're gonna buy this other one, and uh, and then they trade him to the Hawks. Like, well, come on! I just spent all this money on these jerseys, so I'm just gonna have to start buying shirtsies. Just like this is it's a twenty dollars shirt. We'll go with that. DH Gate has some good fake jerseys. I've never bought them, but I know people. What is it? DH Gate. What is that? It's a Chinese like wholesale website. <laughs> I'm telling you, they have some good quality jerseys. For yeah, what it is? Yeah, it's not like Tom Duncan or anything. It's like no, legit. it's legit. <laughs> huh. All right. So is that like ordering from Wish? Yeah, basically. <laughs> but like they're they're like thirty bucks, and they're yeah. they look like pretty authentic. Yeah. I'd say you have to buy one so I can see it. Yeah, yeah. it'll take like two months to arrive. But it'll get here eventually, <laughs> hopefully. Well, we can buy one for next football season. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you uh, go. I'll show you then. <laughs> Are you do you do you buy jerseys? No, no, I do not. No, I'm a big jersey guy. Yeah, you like them? jerseys, like just random guys, or like guys that you like, or is it strictly your team? I probably you have like twelve Browns jerseys. Okay, all right. Then that's pretty much it. Yeah, I just I never wore a lot of jerseys. 
I don't know. I want to start a jersey collection when I get more money. Yeah? I just I don't have... It's a lot of money to keep that up. Yeah. I got more of these, like, uh, fake jerseys uh, than anything else. Like, th- I think that one we got, like, uh, one of those giveaways when we went to a Guardians game. Yeah, that still counts. Uh, M- M- Mateo loves those things. Like, he has a Miles Straw one. He's a center fielder for the Guardians. <laughs> he bats, like, 200. He's he's a really good fielder, but he's he loves it. I, I don't want to hard to tell him. Like, he's not very good at hitting. <laughs> but, but, hey, he starts all the time, and he might win gold glove, so... Um, so is there a reason you don't, like, you buy Steelers gear, just not jerseys? Yeah, um, it's just too much money. All right. Too much money. Like, $90, like, over $100 for some jerseys. Yeah. It's just not, and I'm I'm not going to wear them because I don't think they, like, look good. So let's say, um, let's say somebody you know, some girl you know, hears this podcast. What jersey would you like if you want to buy a jersey? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> Probably, uh, George Pickens. Yeah. Jersey. Yeah. Okay. All yes, right. I like him. What color? Um, Gotta be specific the, here. The color rush one. The like the black with the like the yellow. Oh, okay. The, All right. the really nice ones. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we know. Yeah. Um speaking of gifts that, that that just popped in my head. Are you are you I'll leave you. You're <clears throat> you're separate. Okay. Uh Joel. Um uh, everyone loves getting gifts, right? You love getting gifts. Yeah. Um are you a good gift buyer? Like absolutely not. <laughs> no. I no. uh I like I'm good at like selecting things, but then I don't know. I I also have to buy gifts like for my family. Yeah. It is really hard to buy gifts for my parents. Yeah. Yeah, parents are difficult, man. My my dad, I've bought him three things like the last 3 years. Yeah. They've all just ended up in a storage room or a closet really? somewhere. <laughs> it's, it's honestly pretty you, sad. You're like looking for something you're like, "Oh, it still, yeah, it still so, has the tag on it. It's so right. disheartening. <laughs> it's really sad. Andrea is my wife. Her, her dad always asks for world peace. Like, okay, let's can we let's just buy you something, please? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you like just flat out ask him like, what do you want, or you just try to? Um, yes, him. He's. Yeah. I wish I knew more about my dad. Yeah. Like, uh, me and him talk about football. Yeah. Food. Yeah. That's another okay. one. And that, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. It's and fantasy football. Okay. All right. So, does he like to cook? No. No. I, no. I'm the cook of the family, pretty okay. much. All right. Or my mom. Um. Do you guys? Does he like to go out to eat? Yeah. Yeah. A ton. He. Uh, Those are good. Those are good gifts. Gift cards. Right. I mean. Uh. Yeah. I actually haven't thought about that one. That's. Yeah. That's pretty smart. Yeah. Yeah, he's on the road a lot too because it works. So I'm, I'm sure. Oh, that'll work out. A good, McDonald's yeah. gift card or something like that. McDonald's or even like, uh, it's not as like, I mean, gift cards just in general aren't good. But if they're useful, like I'd much rather have like a useful gift than someone's like, um, trying to like, well, here's a specific thing I bought you because I think you'll like it, and it's fifty fifty shot. But if it's something I can use like right away, especially if he's you know out out and about all the time, you know that might be all right. I used to also like nitpick, like look for certain uh, like things people knew nothing about. Oh yeah, it's just like it was like something really useful you didn't know you needed in your life. Yeah. <laughs> People would appreciate them, but yeah, yeah, they uh, there's a that's why I asked about cooking because there's a lot of stuff like that for like the kitchen. Yeah, uh, I know because my wife and I both cook, and there's just some cool thing like we bought a pressure cooker and Instant Pot. That's awesome, especially yeah. when you have kids and you got to make chicken in like 15 minutes. Oh, it's so good, so good. But he doesn't do any of that stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Um, what about your, do you have siblings? I didn't even ask you that. Yeah, I have a brother who's 22, I'm pretty sure, 21, and then okay. my sister's probably 25, 26. Yeah. And as you guys get older, you know what sucks about buying presents is it gets more expensive because... Completely. Yeah, because there's a point where you're, you're still a child, but you're, you're, re- you're not required, but it's, you should probably buy gifts for your family members. And you're like, wait, I have child money, though. Like, I don't have yeah. the money to be doing this. What we did, we're older now, but what we did uh, is we call it uh, Christmas baskets. So around Easter, we draw names, and we each have one person, or one adult in our family, and we just buy gifts for that one person. So each, and I think it's like a, it, we set a limit. I don't remember what it is. But then each adult gets a basket of gifts, and then you can buy for the kids. Everyone can buy for the kids and stuff because they should have a lot of presents anyway. But it kind of like, so that way you're not thinking like, oh, I got to buy something for 14 people and I only know how to buy something for three people. You know what I mean? That makes so sense. It makes yeah. it a little easier. But that's, it's something that we decided like, it's too much stress. Buying presents is kind of stressful. So we don't want to do that anymore. Cody, how stressful it is to buy gifts for your girlfriend? Oh, man. Um, is she, and is she pretty open about just saying, this is what I want? 
Yeah, she uh, literally just wants flowers. Yeah? So I just do that all the time. But like sometimes I'm just like, okay, I got her flowers six times in the past <laughs> month, so I got to get her something else. Do but you... then I don't know what to get her. Yeah. So yeah. I just like get her a stuffed animal. So <laughs> I feel like she's pretty easy to shop for. She's kind of, she's easy to please okay. with that kind of stuff. Why well, have her on the phone now? No, I'm just <laughs> um, is that Do you always buy the same kind of flowers? Um, no, I try to switch up. Yeah. Usually, I, I mean, I usually get a rose. She really likes sunflowers. So okay. I get her sunflowers. I get her roses. She likes yellow roses. Yeah, all right. All right. Last time I got her like the fall bunch. So it yeah. was like fall colors. Okay. Which I thought it was really cool. She told me she didn't like it. No. No. I <laughs> <laughs> but like, they're only, they flowers are pretty cheap. Yeah. At Kroger, you don't need to break the spend, bank for yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? When I was, uh, when I would when I first started buying flowers for a girl I was dating, like I would just get carnations because they're cheap. Yeah. And after a while, I'm like, man, these are like the garbage of flowers. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I bought one from a gas station one time, <laughs> and I took it to her. She liked it, whatever. It's just yeah. one kind of. Yeah. But her dad uh, came to me, and goes, "Hey, where'd you get that flower? I was going to buy him for the basketball team because he coached the CYO basketball team." Yeah. And I was like, God, I don't want to tell him I got it at the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked at me like, "All right, thank you." And in his head, he's like, please never buy a, <laughs> one of those for my daughter again. Uh, you know, a good a good place, I think it, it's done now because the season's over, and she likes flowers. There's a you pick flower place out um, going towards Grand Rapids, Ohio. Okay. Huge fields. You just go, you pay, I think you, I don't know if you pay ahead of time. I think maybe you pay afterward. I don't remember. But you go and you cut them all and make your own bouquet. Okay. It's pretty cool. You can make a day yeah. of it. There's some good restaurants in Grand Rapids. Yeah. She was talking that she wanted to do that, but. Yeah, schedules never really met for that to yeah. happen. Next year, maybe. Next year, hopefully. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, that's it. Bye, bye. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, Joel, I want to talk about your podcast that you that you guys are doing. All right. Um, it's called the uh, Inside the Hive. Yes, sir. Uh, you've done five, four episodes. Five episodes. I can't remember. Four, I believe. Four. four. Okay. Four. Um, how'd that come to be? How, how's that? You know, I, I, I talked to Miss, uh, Mr. Rogers, uh, about it. Um, but how, did, how did you get involved and how did, you know, how this, so idea... what happened was Rogers was looking for a, uh, host of his podcast and everyone was, uh, like saying, recommending Jack Weisenberger yeah. to do it. Yeah. And Jack was telling us one day at lunch and I was just like, you know what, I'll do it. Because I enjoy talking to people, mm-hmm. so I just meant to be. Yeah. You so, um, it, everything was already planned out. They just needed somebody, someone to help. Yeah. You know, guide this thing a little bit. How? Because um, before before the podcast, you asked about the questions, and you're like, "How do you do this without without you know a script?" Uh, and I told you I've been doing it for a while. I kind of you know it's it's a lot of listening, uh, and as you do it more, even if, when you're talking to people in general, it's. It's more about listening than than trying to think about what you're going to say next, and it's very difficult because the whole time you're like, oh, "I got this question, I got this question." Then this person says something cool, then you're like, "Oh, tell me more about that," and they're like, "Oh no, what was my question? I forgot it." You know, so it's good to have stuff written down. You know, yeah. but as as I mean, you're on you're going to be recording your fifth episode. I'm assuming next week. Mm-hmm. Um, has it gotten easier for you, or has has it you know for with the questions and just interviewing people in general? I'd say it's. It's really been the same. I haven't, haven't like, really. Well, at least it hasn't gotten worse, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't really know how to explain it. It's yeah. one of those things. Like, sure, experience helps, but unless you like know like what the who the person is mm-hmm. beforehand, I feel like it's kind of a hard pro- uh, job to interview them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've usually done. For the most part, probably ninety five percent of the podcasts, I I know the person. Either I've met them once or twice, or I've like you guys, I've known you for a while. Yeah. Um, there's one time I did it. Uh, a guy from Charlotte, he was trying to bring Major League Baseball to Charlotte, and he contacted me and said, "Hey, can I come on your podcast?" And that was the one time where I really didn't like know the person, but it still went okay because I, I think it's because there was a specific thing to talk about, yeah. right? And it makes it a little easier. Um. But but I think it's good too that the people you're interviewing you know because it makes you feel comfortable to mm-hmm. especially get into this and that's what it is anyway. I mean that the inside the hive isn't going to be like hey we're going to go talk to this other school you know what I mean uh, and maybe eventually it turns into something like that you know but you might be long gone doing other things yeah you know? but you started it right 
So so what's the what's the plan for this? Is it is it just going to keep going, you know, until you guys are done with high school? Um I'm pretty sure yeah. We're yeah. we're going to try to continue it throughout yeah. the entire school year. Um from what I understand, I don't know what their plans are, but uh we'll probably me and Jack talked about this and we're thinking we're going to pass it down to to juniors as of now. Okay. And then they'll pass it down and yeah. it'll just be a continuous thing. Yeah, that's cool because I think the more, I mean, podcasting is so popular. I mean, people are going to want to do it, you know, and, and maybe this leads to you guys figuring out like, oh, this is fun. Instead of doing this thing in college, I think I want to shift to, you know, broadcasting or whatever. Yeah. You know, how, um, how many, uh, do you know who you're interviewing like next week or the week after? Or is it just like, I'm sure I've been told, but I know for a fact <laughs> I forgot. That's what I was going to tell you. Like, you can tell people on this podcast. <laughs> oh, wait. Mm. That's all right. That's yeah, all right. I forget. Uh, who, who's in charge of that? Line up the interviews. Um, you guys do that? No, he's, does he? He's the man upstairs. I he's the show up. He's the brain. <laughs> um, do you do you have people that you say, hey, I want to get them on the podcast? Yeah, I, I want to get the entire offensive line on the podcast. That's, yeah. I've been preaching that since day one. I don't I know if you know. have enough mics for that, though. I, I'm i going to figure something out. <laughs> I, I'll get like a studio mic, and then we can all just pass yeah. it around. I don't know. But I, Grant Zimmerly and all of them, I think yeah. that'd be a good episode. Or maybe you do a couple, and then a few weeks later, do a couple more or something. Uh, so here, you, you need the entire unit though to yeah. fully grasp how they. That's a lot of the more mics there are. It's just a lot of it can turn into chaos too. Yeah, you know, it's a lot to try to wrangle in and deal with. <laughs> it is cool. I, I've listened to them. Uh, they've gotten a lot better. The first few, the sound wasn't there. Uh, but they're really good. You guys do a good job. Um, it. Um, do you help formulate those questions? Uh, yeah. So me and Jack usually write the scripts, and then I uh, have my dad like proofread them, and okay. then add questions that he okay. thinks would be fitting. Yeah. And are you guys able to? Do you have the freedom to if somebody's talking, like let's say Coach Connor is talking about something in particular, he's answering a question, and then he says something like in your brain, you're like, oh. I want to. Are you able to like deviate from that at all, or you kind of just stay with the questions? I we were allowed to deviate, but I don't know. The only deviation we really have is when we talk about pizza. That was a that was a common <laughs> thing for okay. the first few episodes. Yeah, and Rogers was not too uh, fond of us keeping the conversation about pizza that long. So we, we <laughs> there's some deviation. I struggle with that actually. That's that's one of my things. Yeah. I I really struggle with that, but I'm trying to get better at it. I like I like when. You know, podcasts go. I for this one, it's just like wherever it goes, it goes. You know, for any episode, um, if sometimes I have things in my mind that I want to get to, but it just doesn't happen because we're talking about this other cool subject. Um, but it, but the only issue with talking about pizza, especially several times in a row, is because you guys are saying the same thing. You know, time after time, unless your pizza preferences change in a week, you know. Yeah. But you, that's the only issue. It's cool to know, like, whatever you guys are talking about, if what kind of pizzas you liked or whatever. It's cool to know what they think. But I've, I've and I've said the same thing, you know, probably twenty times on a podcast about a particular subject, but it just comes up. But that's the only issue um, as I see with with that. You're like, yeah, we know Joel likes banana peppers or whatever, you know. Well, our, our other problem is I feel like we don't have a lot of like topic based questions. It's more specific to one thing questions yeah. that can be interpreted any way you want. Oh, okay. And I feel like that that makes it kind of hard to deviate too. Yeah, yeah, because it's just set on one thing specifically and then it doesn't it could, it could branch into something else if you know how to respond to it yeah but it doesn't leave a lot of room for change i feel like okay all right um cody i'll put you on the spot do you listen to the podcast yeah yeah <laughs> no okay. you don't i listened to, i didn't listen to the cooks in one okay I fell asleep five minutes in <laughs> um the one with the soccer coach couldn't do it yeah fell asleep when, uh, when are you listening to these podcasts? Um, and why in bed? <laughs> well, because like I'm busy throughout the day, and okay, then I'm just right. like I got nothing to do, so I'm just gonna listen to them. But yeah. the one with Connor and Coach Connor was really good. Yeah, appreciate it. That's what uh, like this this podcast. I have a buddy who listens to all of them, and he was like, "I always skip the football player ones." I I go I go uh, why? He goes, "He's just they're kids, and I don't relate that much." And I was like, "That's fine. Every every episode's different, just like for you. Like you related to Connor and Coach Connor." Yeah. But didn't relate to the other stuff, and that's how it happens. Don't be uh, don't be sad when people don't listen. Oh, no, I'm <laughs> completely crushed by it. Honestly, but I I do this because I love to do it. If nobody listened, I would still do it. 
Like, yeah. it's, it's just fun. You seem happy doing it, too. I like it. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. And, and I like, like, when, when football players come on or other kids I've coached, like, it's fun to do that, too, because I learn. I talk to you guys, but I don't, yeah. I don't get to sit down and talk like this. Also, I think it's good for you guys to, like, have a conversation with people. Not that you don't do it, but to sit down and we've been talking for 35 minutes, you know, to be able to do that is a... Uh, is something that you're gonna you're gonna have to learn how to do eventually, right? Yeah. Especially yeah. if you're going to certain colleges or whatever, or doing whatever, you're gonna have to sit through an interview at some point for a job, for a college, for something. You know? Yeah. And you can't just like, well, tell me about yourself. Tell me about your work experience. I worked here. All right, thank you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna cut it. Uh, speaking of college, um, is that something? Is that something you want to do? Both oh of yeah. Both of yeah. 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 Do you know what you want to do already? Um, I'm. Bouncing back between business and engineering. Yeah. And yeah. I'm still undecided. I have no idea okay. what one I'm going to pick. But I definitely want to play football in college. Oh, I was going to ask you that. Okay. Yeah. So how's, how is that process going? Uh, not not the best. Yeah. I haven't really had any luck okay. with coaches yet. But I'm still getting my film together. And hopefully that'll start there, heating up. Yeah. And there's so much. There's so many opportunities now with huddle and the internet and everything yeah. to be able to just you know and the and the small divisions i feel like they're just everywhere and you can you know go, yeah. go somewhere mm-hmm. you know yeah um with with you not knowing a major does that will that play into like i mean i guess it kind of it's open to everything but if you like engineering and you go to the school to play football they don't have engineering are you just like well i guess i'm going business then yeah probably yeah um is that scary? It, it seems scary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not knowing what you're gonna do next is kind of. But you guys are, you know, eighteen. Yeah. Right. You guys, and yeah. it, it's such a tough thing for me to understand. Like, uh, yeah, these eighteen year olds who just graduated college, maybe, uh, maybe barely got their license. Now they're expected to figure out exactly what they want to yeah, do we, for the rest we, of their life. We still gotta ask to go to the bathroom, <laughs> and we're expected yeah. to start paying taxes, start paying like. It just happens so fast. It's a quick turnaround to adulthood. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I uh, When I went to BG after my freshman year, I uh, there was these shirts. They were like uh, uh, Absolute BG. So it was like an Absolute Vodka shirt, but yeah. it's BGSU. And I was like, oh, I want one of those. And like, are you, are you going to do is sign up for this credit card? You get a T-shirt. I'm like, all right, cool. So I signed up for this credit card. Uh, $500 limit, which is nothing. Right. right? Yeah. Immediately max it out. Uh, I think I bought an Xbox 360 at the time. Um but then I learned, like, okay, well, they gave me this free money that isn't free. Now I got to pay all this money back. Yeah. Um, but I learned. I learned and I built my credit and everything. But those are the kind of decisions right. we're making is like, yeah. all right, I'm gonna, I want that t shirt. So, yes, I'll sign up for this credit card. You know? <laughs> and now you got to pick pick your life. It's difficult. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, I don't want you like losing sleep over it, but right. it's it sucks. And I. It's kind of kind of stressful, too. Yeah. Because, like, you got to, you're expected to know what you're going to do right out of high school. Mm hmm. Did you do you feel any pressure to go to college or or um, not really because this is something you want to do? Not really, because like I really want to go to college because I want to keep playing football. I don't want this okay to be my last year okay. of football. Um, but a little bit of pressure from my major. Oh, okay. Because like my mom's like, "What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do?" Yeah, like I have no idea, no idea. Yeah, that's it's again, it's a difficult, it's a tough thing, Joel. Uh, I know you want to play college football also. Mm. Um, do you? How has your process been? Like, I, you, I think you've been on a few visits and that, that kind of stuff too, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's been okay. Yeah, I, I just, I hope I get accepted to schools because yeah. I didn't try my freshman, sophomore, and junior year, so yeah, it's it's pretty rough in that regard. And a lot of colleges, they they look at my film and they like like my size and everything, but then usually once the topic of conversation comes to GPA, it's not good. Yeah, they kicked me out the door. <laughs> and they said, well, we can't accept you? Yeah, no. It's, I have a 2.2 2. 2 right now. Okay. It's and You want to beep that out or are you good? No, I'm okay. <laughs> I just, I just, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> no, I, I'm pretty open about that. And I, I just, a lot of schools in like smaller D3 type level, they have, since they're private, they have a lot of higher GPA requirements. Like, okay. A few of the schools that have offered me like 3.0. Mm-hmm. I know Heidelberg might be the only one without a 3.0 requirement that I've talked to that yeah. has offered me, and it's it's rough. But when you 
when you go and talk to these coaches and you talk to them about then GPA comes up, school comes up, do you tell them like, yeah, this is my GPA? Or do you explain like, hey, um, I didn't, as a freshman or sophomore, I didn't try. I didn't understand where I was going. Now I do. And and I'm assuming your grades are better now. Yeah, right? no, I, I have A's and B's. Yeah, so, he goes, so you can say now, now I do. And this is, and unfortunately, I'm behind the eight ball here, but understand, I know what what I'm supposed to be doing now, and that's what I'm doing. Like, do you do you articulate that, or is it yeah, just no, like, I definitely articulate that. Yeah. I uh, I usually try to set up a phone call with them and explain like what's like happened in my life and like how I ended up to where I am. Yeah, because before this, like, I think before Wittenberg contacted me, I didn't realize I wanted to play college football like that, and then that was my first offer. And so, kind of like. Like a light bulb went off, like, oh man, maybe there is people out yeah, there. I didn't even want to go to college. Oh, really? So I, I was just planning on never going to college. And yeah. I was couch potato my entire life. <laughs> you know, here I am. But I, but I say, I, I remember it last winter or toward even in the spring, you know, getting into our summer stuff, just once, fo- once the football season ended, basically, uh, I just remember coaches always saying, like, man, Joe's really hitting it hard. You know, Joe's in there. Joe looks good. Joe, you know. Yeah. Um, so something at some point, uh, a light went off. You're like, oh, man, yeah, this is, I want to work hard at this. Yeah, well, I just want to say I couldn't have done it without Cody. Yeah. Cody was a big help. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, he would, uh, we would go to the gym all the time yeah. and fitness for all. And, like, even if we didn't talk about it, he would just show up in my house and <laughs> just pick, pick you up. Yeah. And then we go lift. Yeah. That was a big help. Why? Why did you feel like you wanted to do that? Um, or do you even not think about it? You're like, I'm just going to take my friend. I don't want to go by myself. I'm taking my friend. At the time, I kind of didn't like working out by myself because okay. like it was an environment that I wasn't used to yet. Sure. So I didn't really feel comfortable by myself. But once I started seeing his progress, I felt kind of more motivated yeah. too. Yeah. And I wanted to help him even more. So I just kept bringing him. Nice. Along. Yeah. It's um, uh, it's obviously a good thing, right? Um. But to to see, I mean, I don't know if you if you knew that before, but you thought he was helping you, but you were also helping him. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure you, you guys are, you know, 18 guys. You're not going to be like, hey, man, I see your progress. I love it. I'm going to, you know, I'm sure that conversation doesn't happen all yeah, the time, no, right? No. <laughs> Usually we just make fun of each other. Yeah, yeah. Right now. That, well, that's what you're supposed to do. You guys are friends, and, yeah. and that's what happens. But I think it's good to hear that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Like, you thought it was just a one-way street, but... Everything is not just one way. Like, there's always something people can gain from somebody else. And I think it's important. I'm glad that you said that. I think it's important yeah. to, to know, like, you're just not some couch potato that this guy's, like, limping along. Like, you're helping him, too. Right? Yeah. 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 That's cool. That's cool. Um, is that something you guys are afterward, after the season? Have you guys start, talked about that and just continued lifting? I mean, I, I've, I've pressed for it. Cody doesn't seem to. Uh... Well, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work out with you, too. It's just I have other people I'm going to work out with. He's also. cheating on me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys made made other uh, arrangements yeah. besides each other. Yeah. That's all right. That's right. Expand your. <laughs> you got to see other people. Expand. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Expand your uh, weightlifting group. Yeah. Maybe maybe you'll get some knowledge from this other group, and you're like, oh, Joel, that would help Joel out, and then you get get some help with that too. All right. Okay. Yep. You got to yep. look at the bright side. Yeah, no, I'm looking at the bright side. <laughs> Man, I feel like the car ride, you guys came together, the car ride home is going to be brutal. <laughs> oh, you're like, actually, Joel, can you just walk from here? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really don't care. I, I have other people to work out with. If yeah. you and Cody don't work out with all of them. Is it, with them. Do you enjoy working out? Is it fun? Oh, absolutely. I, yeah. I love it. Lifting yeah. is, I enjoy lifting more than I do playing football. Yeah. What about you? Um, I like lifting more yeah. than football. It was lifting for me in high school. Was, I did not like it. Really? Yeah, I didn't like it. Um, maybe if it was now, like same thing with our offense. I played wing tee and we ran the ball ninety percent of the time. Yeah. You know, so maybe if if I played football now, it would be different because it's everything's different. But I just I got in trouble. Like I, that's how little I went to weightlifting. Yeah. You know, and and when college recruits or co- coaches would come, my head coaches say, like, "Yeah, he's a big dude. Uh, doesn't love the weight room." And I was standing right there, like God. <laughs> and but he's I mean he's not wrong right that's yeah. I did I did not go to the weight room so I'm glad you guys like that because not only is it going to help you now obviously or if you, when you guys play college football it's going to help you but if you keep that like it's just going to make your life better in general you know yeah. that's something I'm yeah. learning now where I gotta I gotta work out more otherwise I'm going to feel like garbage and my life's going to suck mm-hmm. right 
So I need a I need a Cody to pick me up and I got you. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> um I don't know, what do you guys got? You guys how, so uh, I I got something. Psych. Okay. I don't I don't okay. give a shit what you guys want. Okay. Um the season so far, obviously we're doing really well. Right. 10 and 1, 10 straight wins. Uh which I didn't even real like I'm so stupid. I didn't even realize like I was listening to BCSN and like, yeah, the 10 straight wins. I'm like, oh yeah, we lost our very <laughs> first game and then we won every one. Uh obviously beating Anthony Wayne, huge. Right. Uh beating mommy, not as huge, but it's still our rival and it was the last time. Yeah. Uh, I think the fanfare around the game was pretty cool. Like to be in that picture with both teams and everything, like the last one, presumably the last one. And that's just something that people are going to see forever, you know? Yeah. Um, but how do you guys feel about the season now? Like, like we just we just won our first playoff game. Um, this will come out next Thursday, which is so our next playoff game will be tomorrow. Um, how do you feel, like, as the team? How do you feel the team? Um, the I think team? there's still a lot of things we can work on as a group, but mm-hmm. I think we're pretty hot right now mm-hmm. and i think we can make a run in the playoffs yeah yeah joel I, I, just, I just hope we don't experience the feeling of jerome again oh, yeah. yeah that's i i think about it every day yeah and i just i'd never want to feel that again um regarding that game there's after the game all the coaches were talking just waiting for uh you guys to get on the bus um and Coach Sim said something that that really like I really th- it it was very true. He said in years past because we were down what twenty twenty four to seven I think. Yeah. He goes in years past those games turn into like thirty seven seven games because we just don't battle back. Yeah. And he goes the one thing that we can take away from that game. Uh, no one likes moral victories, but the one thing you can take away is that we made it a game and we had a shot. He goes in years past that just wasn't the case. I think that's important going forward because even this game against Finley, you know, we we won forty nine twenty one the second week, yeah. And at halftime, we're winning by three. You're like, what is happening? You right, know? Yeah. How did you guys feel going to that game? Did you feel like, oh, this is going to be easy? Um, I knew it was going to be harder than yeah. what it was week two, but I didn't expect it to be that close. Yeah, and I didn't want it to be that close. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. I absolutely like. I, I hate being like. Expe- ha- like having expectations behind me, yeah, and like as a team, the the Twitter polls and all that stuff, yeah. it, it gets to my head, and I absolutely cannot stand being like seen as the better, better team. And yeah. that, I, I was like afraid. I, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I did not enjoy uh, sitting there on Friday in the locker room before the game. Yeah, I was about to piss myself a little. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. But we we took care of business. Yes, Although we did. Yes, we did. Wasn't the cleanest, but and I think and I think it's important. Like we have because we haven't played a game like that since Anthony Wayne. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, um. So it's it's almost a month of games where we we haven't played that like that. Um. And I think it's important going forward because every game is going to be like that. Yeah. We have yeah. to be able to do that kind of stuff. Or when we're down, we have to be able to come back. So I think week one was important, even though we didn't win. We still made it a game. I think that's mm-hmm. important. Um. I've enjoyed like it's so much fun. Uh, I talked to Coach Marshall's wife, Lexi, on here, and um, and I talked to Coach Whitner just about the f- like watching kids, watching you guys play. Um, it's fun to see you guys excited, and obviously, it's terrible like when you guys cry or get upset or whatever, and it's it's hard to like manage those those uh, emotions. But all of the, anything, any bad stuff, you know, the good stuff outweighs outweighs the bad stuff and and i'm having fun watching you guys play like it's a lot of fun um (laughs) i feel so bad like i'm just not that kind of coach to like yell a lot i just Mm -hmm. i just don't yell and that's just my Mm -hmm. thing right Mm -hmm. okay not a lot right (laughs) friday nights when we're uh past the blue line or whatever it is (laughs) well that's frustrating that's an easy (laughs) one to do there's the line get behind it like i don't that's why that's why i get mad right because it's so it's such an easy thing to do but like football field stuff, like Coach Paul just ripped into you. Uh, I don't, I don't know if it was this game. I think it was the Mavi oh, game, maybe. Geez. And I looked. I'm like, God, dang, that's. And he is a professional yeller. Like he's really good at. Like, I'd say so. I, <laughs> I, oh, yeah. I he's really uh, good at it. I think he's probably given me the biggest ass chewing <laughs> out of every single person in my life before. The only thing I hope I hope you guys don't take it like personal. No, absolutely. Right? Not. Yeah, it's just football stuff. It's Friday night, uh, and it rarely happens in practice. Like he's not going to get that amped in practice, right? So mm-hmm. it's like a, a 
kind of focus thing. No, I'm, I'm, I said rarely. I didn't say never. Right? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I just because that's not not my thing. Like to like like when Graham messes up, I'm, I I come and talk to him. Or I show him on film or whatever, and and that's just how I do it. You know. But so I always feel bad. Like oh man, look, there's Joel. Joel's crying again. No, I'm just kidding. You know, <laughs> you know Graham. <laughs> you get very. I can see your face. <laughs> He's looking at me like I ball my eyes out after every play I get yelled at. So I, I think the yelling is like definitely a positive thing like, yeah. to experience. Well, I think pe- – and, and some people handle it. Like you handle it. Yeah. Like, and, and I think coaches know that too. Like you can't yell at everybody because mm-hmm. there's some kids that don't take coaching like that. Yeah. Right? And at some point everyone gets yelled at. So I, like you said, it's, it's just what you got to go through. Yeah. And although I might not shut my mouth, I feel like it's uh, – <laughs> That adds a layer of yelling to it. Oh yeah, completely. <laughs> but it it reinforces the, like the reason you can't mess up. It's like yeah. a, it's a cutthroat game. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. there's, I mean, one play can 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 win or lose a game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you when you guys are out there? Do you feel like oh, if we don't make this third down, that's it? Like, do you, do you feel that out there, or are you just playing? Um, I'm just playing. Yeah, because um, if I do my job, I just gotta expect everybody else to do their job. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of just do what I'm told and yeah. don't worry about the outcome. Honestly, as as a defensive unit, we – I think – wait, can you repeat the question? I, is that I, how I you feel? Gonna... Like when you're out there, like like if we don't stop them on this play, like do you do you yeah, feel yeah. every play like, um, like that like that much where it's like, oh, man, it's third and long. We got to stop them here. No. Be- besides the fact that, yes, we have to stop them because we get the ball back, but it's like life or death. It's it's never like that. Um. As a defensive unit, I think the only situation where we've been in like a life or death situation was St. John's. Yeah, um, and you could feel that it was it was a different energy from us as a defense. But I I know like we expect to like make plays mm-hmm. for ourselves, and I think we hold ourselves to high regards like as a defensive unit. Yeah, and I feel like even if we do mess up, let them get like a third and long. We'll rally back and respond. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's uh, it's been a fun season, and just like you guys, I'm sure I don't want it to end until the end, yeah. until the the first week in December. Um, but I'm happy for you guys. Your success, all your successes, putting another uh, league championship on there, on the in the locker room is awesome. That's something that you guys can. There you go. Your shirt. Something something you guys can come back. You know, ten years from now and still see it up there and know that you were part of it. Um, actually, part of. Two now, right? You guys are there for twenty. Yeah, um, yeah. Not as involved then, you not know. Not right? at all. Uh, but uh, there nonetheless. So thanks for coming out here, guys, um, and uh, and coming on the podcast. You guys are awesome. So thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us. Thanks everybody for checking out this episode of the Nerd Ball Podcast. Please rate, v- review, and subscribe wherever you're hearing this on any of the podcasters on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. We're kind of coming at you two times a week now, audio and video. Check us out on all the social medias. Just search the Nerdball Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. We're out there. Uh, Gmail is the Nerdball Podcast at gmail.com. If you want to shoot us an email, we'd be happy to get back to you. Thanks to Real JP Multimedia, Cuttlefish Graphics, Perrysburg Junior High STEM Lab and Big Daddy Graphics for helping out the podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.